Good afternoon. Welcome and thank you for joining us. I'm Lisa Lidenka, I'm the Help Center Manager from the Greater Cleveland Food Bank. With me today, we have Andy Trares, who is the Deputy Director at the May Dugan Center. Andy oversees the food distribution program at May Dugan and has been in his current role for eight years there. Also with me today is Sari Jackson, Corporate Relations Manager, Cause Marketing from the Greater Cleveland Food Bank. Sari has been with the Greater Cleveland Food Bank for just over a year. We recognize that many of our partners face challenges reaching community members to let them know about programming that's available and resources that may be available to them. We also understand the ongoing need for additional fundraising. Because of that, our goal for this afternoon is to share some helpful strategies with all of you to reach neighbors in your community and to increase fundraising. As you have questions, please enter them into the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. We'll allow time at the end um, to go through those questions. And we also would be really glad if you all join us in sharing some ideas that you have um, for strategies that you use in your own programs to reach neighbors and do some fundraising. So a little bit of group share at the end as well. Um, first to present will be Andy Trares from May Dugan. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, so just starting off, uh, the May Dugan Center, we are a social service agency here in Cleveland, located on the near west side. And our mission is to help people enrich and advance our lives and communities, enrich and advance their lives and communities. Uh, we have six core programs, including our food distribution program. Uh, during the pandemic, we had to switch to uh, a couple different formats, including drive-through, pre-scheduled walk-ups, as well as delivery. And in the first year of the pandemic, we served over 500,000 meals from the May Dugan Center. So today, when we had to change our, today what I'm gonna focus on are a couple strategies for specifically reaching clients and how you communicate with them, given that some of the traditional ways of outreach have had to change during the pandemic. So with the changing formats, we had to get creative on how we communicated with clients. Um, so that included social media, our website, uh, text message reminders, as well as robocalls. And so what we always, uh, when we are looking at our social media strategy, and how we are communicating with our clients. We have a couple different goals. You know, we wanna promote our programs to those who may not know about us. We wanna clearly communicate uh, our uh, program processes and procedures, which was very important during COVID. You know, we had one distribution normal, and then two weeks later, everything had changed. And so we had to explain how the new processes were gonna work. And then we had to efficiently try to get as many views as possible. And I'll dive into that a little bit uh, more in depth, but you know, particularly maximizing that social media piece. So for the May Dugan Center, we have a couple of different social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and for, you know, smaller organizations or volunteer run organizations, if you're considering doing some sort of social media, I say, you know, focus in on one, maybe two, you don't have to do all of them uh, because, you know, sometimes it's just not worth your time. Like a well-maintained social media presence is better than having multiple formats. And so what we've found is that we interact with our clients a lot on Facebook, that you know, each platform has its own audience and our clients seem to be on Facebook. And so when we post things there, we seem to get a fair amount of response. We get questions um, in, re in regards to our posts. And one thing I wanna touch on uh, is specifically talking about different tips for increasing interactions. Um, so that's gonna be kind of how you compose your posts themselves, uh, paid promotion, as well as natural views and ways of generating interest in uh, your page overall. So like a likes campaign or something like that. So starting off with the post and you know, there's one thing with social media is that while they're really great tools for communicating with people, they are also businesses. So you know, for organization pages, what Facebook or Twitter or Instagram are trying, they're trying to get us to pay for views. And so that's why, and you probably have experienced this yourself, like you see an organizational post that has three likes, and then you post something that has 50 likes. And that's because they're trying to get the organizational page to invest money to get more views. But there are some ways around it. So one is, uh, when you compose the text of a post, ask yourself, you know, what information is uh, important to know? And this is just kind of the nuts and bolts of what you want to share with your clients. And so... Uh, it's making sure that the language is in a format um, at a level that people can understand that if you're working with non-English speakers, that you are 
uh, if you're working with non-English speakers that you post in the other languages as well. And then the process for asking questions. Do you want them messaging you via the social media platform or do you want them to call your organization? Um, another helpful tip um, is specifically looking at uh, how you, uh, what the content is in addition to the post. So you'll have a text post, but then you'll also, next slide. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> You'll also one thing that particularly if you have a long amount of text and you know a lot of times, uh, particularly these days, there are a lot of information, lots of information that you want to share with your clients. And so making sure you know what's above the see more category and what's below it. So next slide. Um, and then the other piece is uh, add a visual to it. So it can be something as simple as a graphic. It can be a photo of one of your distributions or like you see here on the screen, it can be a photo of some of the food that you're distributing as well. But by doing that, it also helps get some more of those natural views uh, as opposed to just a straight text post. So in terms of soliciting additional views, uh, one quick, easy way to do it is pay promotion. So for as little as $5, you can target specific demographics. You can do geography or various groups. Uh, you can also boost either a post or your whole page. And so that's if you want people to just sign up and like your organization, then you can uh, pay for that. Or if you want to promote just an upcoming distribution, you can promote that post as well. And another strategy that we've used is that in our neighborhood in Ohio City, uh, there are a couple different community groups um, that are on Facebook, as well as kind of non-geographic groups. Um, you know, there's a large Puerto Rican community in the Clark Fulton neighborhood. And so we often post in the Cleveland Puerto Ricans group or the Cleveland Pandemic Response Group. And these are just you know, sometimes hundreds or thousands of people that are part of these groups. And so when we post in there, they usually get a lot of views as well. So the uh, one other thing you can do, uh, a couple other things, uh, are try to get natural views. And so this is a little bit more sophisticated, but it's, uh, you know, some people use the word influencer, um, but it's basically finding folks that you know have a very strong social media presence in the communities that you're trying to target. And so asking them to post on your behalf. So that's either sharing your post or sending them information and say, hey, can you post this picture with this brief description? And by the person posting that, not the organization, you usually get more views on that post as well. And so if the goal is to try to reach as many people as efficiently as possible, that's a really easy way to do it. Because you can really specifically pinpoint um, you know, reaching some of those natural groups and natural networks that exist on social media. The other thing you can do for just getting folks to follow your page in general is do a likes campaign. And so, you know, if you're distributing bags of food, include a flyer in it that says, you know, follow us on Facebook for regular updates. Or you could do things like um, if you're able to secure some funding, um, I mean, it could be as little as $100. You could say for the first 100 people to like uh, the May Dugan Center, well, using May Dugan as an example, like if we wanted to say, you know, for the next 100 people that like the May Dugan Center, a donor is going to do donate a dollar per like. Additionally, uh, you know, in your facility, as folks are coming through, just having a sign that simply says, you know, follow us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter or Instagram. So lastly, uh, some of the other outreach tools kind of beyond social media that we found extremely helpful in the past year have been uh, text message and robocall services. And so these are, uh, well, they're what they're sound, but they're mass, kind of mass marketing tools. And so listed on the screen are the two sites that we use. There are a variety of different sites out there. Uh, one thing we found with both text message as well as robocall reminders is that the consistency is really important. And so, you know, we do our distributions on Wednesdays. And so Monday mornings are when our text messages go out and when our robocalls goes out. And so that way, clients know that, oh, if they're getting a call from the May Dugan Center, sometimes usually they don't even answer. They just now know that that's our number and it's coming on Monday. That means there's a distribution Wednesday. Uh, one note on both text message reminders as well as social media reminders is that they are mass communications and so they're regulated by the FCC. So while uh, it may seem pretty simple when you go to sign up, those the services that you use will walk you through all the regulations around that. It's definitely doable. It just takes a little bit more care than you know, posting on social media. And uh, thank you all very much. Um, I'll 
be here for the Q&A, but follow us, follow the May Dugan Center on social media and feel free to reach out if you have any specific questions. Hi, uh, my name is Sari. I'm with uh, the Greater Cleveland Food Bank. I am one of our corporate relations managers and I focus on cause marketing. Uh, I think my slides are the next one. Okay, yep. Next one again. Okay, great. Uh, so first I wanted to start out with defining cause marketing. Um, when I was new to the food bank, this was a new term to me. I had not heard it used outside of food banking, so I thought it would be great to start with breaking down exactly what it is. Uh, Cause-related marketing is used by our food bank and others to develop relationships with businesses in our area, as well as raising awareness among their consumers. Cause-related marketing is an easy and engaging way to support your organization by engaging existing and potential customers. Cause marketing refers to a type of marketing involving the cooperative efforts of a for-profit business and a nonprofit organization for mutual benefit. And I think this mutual benefit idea is really key to understanding what businesses and what kinds of businesses will be a good fit for your organization in a potential partnership. Go to the next slide. Uh, the company or organization supports the nonprofit organization by utilizing its financial resources to market an activity to a customer base. Uh, it encourages participation through consumer awareness, perception, education, and active promotion. And I think one of the most important things about these campaigns is that it has to be easy and intuitive for the customer to participate in. The benefit offered by the nonprofit is the use of the name or logo to leverage support for the specific marketing activity. Uh, this is commonly known as the halo effect. It's the sense of goodwill that accompanies uh, businesses that engage in these sorts of corporate social responsibility. Um, when I was doing my research for this presentation, I actually came across a few really interesting studies that really quantitative, quantitatively showed uh, the impact of cause-related marketing. Um, in 2020, a study found that 73% of respondents believe that a company can take actions that both increase profits and improve conditions in communities where they operate. 75% uh, of Americans say that they typically donate some amount of money to charity every year, and about one third say that they've donated during an in-store checkout or grocery store, at a grocery store or drugstore. Uh, and then interestingly, 75% of companies giving and volunteering have two times more engagement than companies only offering giving or only offering volunteering. So it's a really great way to roll in any potential volunteer opportunities that you have with this fundraising campaign because they complement each other really well. So next, uh, the food bank engages in a variety of CRM campaigns. One kind of campaign that we do quite frequently are register campaigns, also known as point of sale campaigns and cash collections. Uh, these campaigns can be wide ranging in their scale. Um, some of the examples that you see on the screen like Giant Eagle and Dunkin' Donuts uh, are across multi stores and multiple stores in multiple cities involve the coordination of their headquarters and other partner food banks in the area. Um, all the way down to Fred Smith and Lakewood that has a cash collection box on the counter. And it's literally a box where people put cash in. Um, and this raises several thousands of dollars for us every quarter. Uh, the, those cents and those single dollar bills really add up to make an impact. Uh, small businesses in your area that might use a POS system like Square have the capacity and the ability to do a roundup button on their Square tablet. Um, so it's always worth asking and exploring if businesses are um, able and have the infrastructure to support a register campaign. Uh, this goes back to the idea that it should be easy for a customer to participate in a cause marketing campaign. So there's nothing easier than at the end of your purchase when a prompt comes up on the screen and all you have to do is tap to make a donation. Uh, uh, another way that we raise money through cause marketing is through give back campaigns. Uh, these campaigns involve businesses donating back money raised during a specific time or the proceeds from a specific item. Uh, for example, King's Nuts at uh, advertises for us during the holidays and we receive proceeds from a certain item in their holiday catalog. Uh, Master Pizza runs a month-long campaign for us where they actually create two new pizzas and those two pizzas are, the, pro the proceeds from those two pizzas come to the food bank. 
Um, and then something really cool that Platform Beer does are give back nights. So these are kind of restricted to just one night uh, where a certain percentage of proceeds from food or drink will come back to the food bank. And during the pandemic, uh, businesses have expanded some of their delivery and takeout uh, capabilities and platform was able to extend this campaign to their delivery and takeout orders, which was really great for us. Um, so again, these opportunities can vary in scale and size, but they are great for businesses in your area that might not be able to do a register campaign or rely on more cash business. And this is a really great way to test the waters to do a one night event uh, to raise awareness among their customers and in your community. Um, and then also I did want to share um, for anybody that's interested, um, we do have a sample cause related marketing agreement, uh, cause related marketing guidelines and an example flyer. Uh, these are just some of the tools we use when talking with potential and current cause related marketing partners. And again, I would be happy to email them out uh, if anybody's interested in seeing those. Um, but yeah, that's my spiel. Good afternoon again. Um, as I mentioned at the top of the hour, I'm Lisa Lidicom, the Help Center Manager here at the Greater Cleveland Food Bank. Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar, our Help Center is uh, fully staffed uh, with six client help specialists, 7 a.m. through 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. And we take inbound calls from clients who are looking to apply for public benefits and also clients who are looking to find um, access to emergency food, which is where you all come in. So one of the, the main things that we do in our help center is to connect people to programs in their area where they can access food from all of you. Um, so a lot of what our marketing is focused on is getting those connections made on your behalf. Um, so what I'll talk about this afternoon is just how to reach clients. I'll talk with you a little bit about a few ideas that we currently do that are free of cost some potential or proposed ideas that we have for things that we may want to implement in the near future, and then some current strategies that we use that do incur a cost. Um, and I'll let you know the ones that are a little bit more expensive than others, just in case you're wondering for future reference. Hopefully you can use some of the strategies that Sari talked about to get a little bit of additional funding and to maybe look at some of these strategies. Currently, uh, we have two free methods that we are using. One is Craigslist. Um, it's totally free to go on Craigslist and post some ads, relatively easy. You can get an ad posted usually within about five minutes. Um, you do have to kind of check in once in a while, the ads will expire, um, but it's pretty easy to you know, get your logo on there, get your message out there for the community. Another thing that we're using is the Ward newspapers. So I was able to get in contact with the executive assistants um, for most of the wards in Cleveland and just ask them about their quarterly newspapers or monthly newspapers that they have going out to all the members of their community and have some information shared there about our health center so that we can get more, more people calling in and make those connections. So if you're in um, Cleveland, that would be a wise idea to try to make a connection with them. Some potential ideas that we have, and a lot of these come from other food banks across the network of Feeding America, which is why at the end of this session, I hope that we can have a lot of discussion about strategies that other people are using, because I feel like idea sharing is a great way to learn from one another. Um, but some of the ideas that we've heard from elsewhere are maybe pull tabs in pharmacies. So if you can picture like a single page piece of paper with the pull tabs across the bottom, that have your organization's phone number or dates and times of service or something like that that people can kind of quickly grab, put in their pocket and then refer back to later on. Um, pharmacies tend to you know, be pretty busy, especially right now in the time of COVID and people still seeking out vaccines. So that can be really rewarding and um, impactful way to reach people. List purchases. So if you're going to do something which is in our current paid um, category, which is to send out um, any sort of bell pack or any sort of postcard mailing, you may need to purchase lists of people in your area so that you have all the addresses and everything to mail um, that information to. Instagram is another, um, and I think, you know, this was covered already in, in the May Dugan portion of things, but, you know, Instagram, obviously all social media, Facebook, um, things like that. So just sharing those messages out on social media and hoping for people to reshare that message with their network of friends and family. RTA bus wraps. So I imagine this is something and we haven't looked into it yet, but this would be pretty costly. 
Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we all know who makes a pay. So I think um, every once in a while that financial investment is really worth it. You know, we've, we've seen it work uh, for a lot of people. So just another idea. Radio ads, certainly, um, you know, that's reaching a, a broad um, area of people in the city. Partner websites. So thinking of like your local libraries and things like that, if they could put a link to your website or put a phone number or list your dates and times of service, obviously will be a way to um, get in contact with a lot of your community members on a local level for your local library. Also social services organizations, one another, um, just anyone if you, you know, search by your zip code and kind of see what's going on or know what's going on in terms of social service and other organizations that are out there trying to help community members. They can sort of just share your information on their web, already existing websites. And then local podcasts. So this is just an interesting idea that came up recently about the fact that, you know, podcasts are, are a very popular thing right now. People are tuning in all over the place for a variety of podcasts. So maybe tapping into that market of, you know, people who are just willing to mention on your behalf um, the good work that you're doing. And then getting over to some of the current strategies that we're using that do involve um, some sort of payment, RTA speaker ads. So they run like 60 second ads. It's really nice because you can choose um, whether, you know, what sort of voice you want saying the message and, you know, all of those kind of factors. Um, and then they'll run for about 60 seconds as people are getting on and off the buses. Robocalls, as Andy mentioned, um, we also use Callfire, which he had listed on one of his slides. So we use that for our robocalls and our robotext. We use that both for our um, scheduled distributions and also sort of at novel times, just when call volume may be sort of slow. Um, we will have an outgoing message to say, if you're in need of help, please press one. It will reconnect them to one of our live client help specialists who can then begin a conversation with them. So sometimes that's a really nice way just if you kind of see a lull in things and you, and you want to pick it up um, to just run a robocall or a robotext to kind of pick up the pace as far as getting in contact with folks. Stickers. So um, stickers are a relatively inexpensive way um, to do a lot of things. So we add them to meals that go out of our kitchen um, and then really anywhere else that we can that's appropriate to just have small stickers, you know, circles about like three or four inches in diameter that just have the logo and the phone number on it is a great way to drive calls to your organization. Also, again, you could just put your dates and times of service. I realize that not everyone has someone to answer phones all day, every day. So just listing dates and times of service so that people know that they can show up um, would be helpful. Partners. Um, all of you, thank you very much for having posters that share the information about our help center at your locations. Again, this is where local community comes in, talking with your local library um, branch to see if you can post something there on a bulletin board that they have, things like that. You know, having some, some posters made up wouldn't be a huge cost um, and can be really impactful as far as just people walking by and viewing those things, even walking in and out of grocery stores. Uh, oftentimes they have resource boards and things like that. Um, Google, so we have a contract with Feeding America where um, we have certain keywords that if they're Googled, it will pop up with a page that people can give us their contact information and we can reach back out to them. So that's something that's a little bit more costly, but perhaps you want to explore that. Pens at outreach events. So good old fashioned, you know, outreach with a little bit of swag with your phone number or logo on it can always go a long way as those pens get passed around. Um, shared with new people, then your phone number and your information is traveling around the city. Bumper stickers, so we have, um, they're not actually stickers, so that may be a misnomer, but um, they're magnets. We have magnets with our phone number again for our help center just to drive calls into there. So that can be something if you have volunteers, maybe just get enough magnets for all of your volunteers to have. And then as they're driving around your neighborhood or the city, um, they'll be broadcasting that sort of like a mobile um, billboard for you. Facebook, I think Andy covered pretty well. <laughs> Again, back to the social media thing. I think that's a, a pretty wise investment and use of time. Valpac ads, um, if we can go to the next screen. So everything from here on out, I actually do have a visual attached to. So this is a Valpac ad that we ran. Um, basically on the front side is just general information about why people should be calling, what number to call. And on the back of it, it gives a little bit more specific information about income guidelines and whether or not they would actually um, 
to be eligible for the benefit for SNAP. The next thing would be direct mail postcards. And I talked about this earlier. So there is a cost associated to this one. It depends on how many you're mailing. Also with the bail pack, they can get pretty specific as far as geographic location that you're gonna mail to, whether it be by zip code, by neighborhood. So you can limit the number of, you know, bail pack that you're sending out depending on what your budget is for that. And the same with direct mail postcards. So you can really limit it down to specific areas. Maybe you want to do this a couple times a year and do like half of your service area one time, another half another time. Um, and just design something that you feel like will really target what you're looking for. So we're gonna be running a bail pack pretty soon, targeting people who may be unemployed or underemployed due to the pandemic. Um, so the focus still is on connecting them to food, but really trying to reach the people who have been impacted in their work. The next thing we have are flyers and community lot sandwich board signs. So our flyers, basically we just have printed at all times and take those out everywhere that we're going. Our outreach team takes them. We try to leave them at libraries, at senior centers, you know, all sorts of places that we think people will be walking by a check-in desk and maybe grab one on their way by or see the phone number. Those can be a pretty inexpensive way of doing it because you don't even need to have it professionally done. We do pay a printer for them, um, but I think that's something that you definitely could print on your own um, at your organization. They don't have to be too, too fancy. And then the sandwich board signs at the muni lot. So we're using those just as folks drive through to access food at our weekly distribution at the muni lot so they can see the phone number for the help center and call for additional help. Um, I think those are a nice way to sort of grab people's attention to put outside as you're doing distributions um, and to have the phone number and you know have people reconnect with you or get in touch with you um, maybe during off hours have them outside so that people know again your service dates and times or your phone number or how to reach you. One of our most recent initiatives has been billboards. Hopefully you've seen them around the city. Um, this one is is costly, fairly costly, but um, we're hoping that it's going to pay off. We think that um, the, the branding and, and the photos that we have on here are, are pretty eye-catching. So we're hoping that a lot of people will notice these and this will drive a lot of callers to our help center. And then our fleet of vehicles, um, they all have the contact information on the side. So again, they're sort of like our mobile billboards for us going back to the bumper stickers that we have or the magnets that we have on our cars. Um, think of the audience that you can reach as you're driving through the city, as all of your volunteers are driving through the city, as all of your staff are driving through the city, and that phone number is at every intersection that you go to essentially with, with the vehicles um, all broadcast, broadcasting that for you. This one is actually not paid, so I apologize for that. I have it in the, in the wrong location, but um, we work with the Cleveland Clinic and, and receive referrals from them for patients who need assistance with food. So they have agreed to put a message on their after visit summaries for their patients, um, just letting folks know that if they do need help with food, again, please call our help center. So this is something you know that we think is pretty smart. Um, you know, as people maybe mention the need to their healthcare provider, they can make that connection, or just as people go home and sort of read that after visit summary to see. Um, what else what else is available for them that would be on there. So maybe partnering with some local places to just say, you know, as you give receipts or things like that, maybe they can mention the phone number or the location for you. And then another one is um, the logo on our boxes. So as you're distributing, this is something um, that is a really smart idea because as every person leaves, everyone that they walk by as they're going home, people are gonna see that logo. Oh, where did you get that box of food? Here's where I got it, here's the phone number to call. If the cost for this is too high, this is another area where stickers could come in, where you could just use you know, your normal boxes and maybe order some stickers that are less expensive than the custom boxes and go ahead and put the stickers on them as they're leaving your location. Um, it's a great way to have people come back to you because they'll remember um, who you are and where you're located. And also, again, for them to kind of spread the word as they go through the community. So those are the ideas that we have. Um, we're happy to answer anything that has come in through the Q&A as far as questions go. Our contact information is there. So anyone who would like to speak with us further about anything in particular that you've heard today, we're happy to speak with you individually. And then as I mentioned before, please, please, please take time to pop in and share ideas and strategies that you have that you found should work um, for your organization. So from the Q&A, this is for me. 
If you had to choose one or two ways to reach clients that have a cost for someone who has not done so before, what would you pick as a good first step? I'll be honest, the return on investment for Valpack has been really, really impressive. Um, I also like the idea that you can customize your Valpack for whatever it is that you're looking for, whatever your target audience is, and that you can customize the location. Um, you know, almost down to street level with them. The people at Valpac have been really, really helpful um, in that regard. I would also say robocalls. Robocalls have been great for us. Like I said, on their days where calls coming into the help center are a little bit slower, we can turn on a robocall, run it for a while until our queue fills up and then pause it, take all of those calls, start it back up, run it again, fill up the queue. Um, so I think that's a really great way that we have found to connect people would be robocalls. Um, for Andy or Lisa, how much does it cost to do robocalls? Yeah, so so robocalls uh, for so we keep uh, we keep our message under a minute, and so it's sixty dollars for a thousand calls, and so because you buy them in chunks, so to speak, like you buy credits. And so it's basically, if it, it's a minute per credit. And so if you keep it under a minute, you're spending $60 for a thousand. And I would second that that is a really, um, really effective way to reach folks. Okay. Um, you can stay on Andy, we have another one for him. <laughs> Andy, how did you determine that your client base participates in social media? And how long did it take to get them used to following you there? Yeah, so, you know, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, when we started the Made You Can Center Facebook page, we viewed it as being mainly a donor focused platform that we were using it to talk to our donors and supporters. Um, but, you know, with a lot of folks having, you know, free or reduced cell phones and particularly smartphones, that we've noticed that a lot more of our clients. Um, are on social media, particularly Facebook. And we've just sort of organically noticed that through uh, interactions. And so, you know, we'll post something and then we'll get a lot of comments related to it or questions, particularly early on in the pandemic when things were changing uh, pretty rapidly. And so that, that's where we see the most client interaction. Um, I would recommend to folks that if you're, again, kind of debating which platform to invest your time in, you can always just ask your clients, you know, are you on social media? which platform, you know, would it be helpful to find, uh, to get regular updates via social media? So uh, that's always, you know, the easiest place to start, uh, or you could just go with whatever uh, platform you're most familiar with, so. Okay, we're gonna go back over to Sari. Sari, it says, I have never approached the business about raising money for my program. How do you approach a business about doing a cause-related marketing campaign? How does that conversation start? Yeah, um, I think that's a great question. Um, if it's a business that you're familiar with um, and you have somebody's contact information there, uh, sending a short email or a letter is a really great way to go, just stating your mission, what you aim to do, uh, you know, what you would expect from the business. Is it promotion? Is it hosting a cash collection box? Um, and also feel free to brainstorm with them. Um, business owners might have experience doing some of this corporate philanthropy with other organizations and might be able to make suggestions as well. Um, and then on, if you poke around on businesses' websites, sometimes businesses will have an info box or an email. Uh, for example, Dewey's Pizza, they have their Do More initiative, and that's just a simple form on their website that you can fill out to request information about a give back night and things like that. So I would say it varies case by case, business to business, but starting with your mission and then laying out clear guidelines for both parties is where I would start. If I can add to that. So um, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head that uh, a lot of places already do uh, these give back nights and they're regularly scheduled. I know platform is Tuesdays and we actually made Dugan just did one about three weeks ago there. And so one thing that we've also found, uh, so the May Dugan Center doesn't necessarily tell you exactly what we do. It's not in our name. And so when we do these, uh, you know, cause marketing fundraising events, we usually like to designate them for a specific project. And so that really helps also get new folks in the door. So it's 
you know, help us fund this, the food costs related to this particular distribution, or, you know, if it's around the holidays and years past, it's been, you know, help us fund turkeys for Thanksgiving, things like that. And that really, particularly for new donors can get, uh, can give them a really concrete way that they know that they're giving back. And that then introduces them to your organization and then you can go from there. Okay, so one more question. It says, do you suggest targeting clients or donors on social media or does it depend on the campaign? So <laughs> short answer is both, because um, both are on these days, uh, both around social media. Uh, what we found is that, you know, in communicating with our clients via social media, we're also letting our donors know what we're up to. And so, while we definitely have a blended, uh, you know, part program and client facing social media presence, we also are talking to our, you know, friends and supporters as well. And so uh, you basically just are, do both. And, you know, in the process, you kind of share the full picture with, with both groups. Hey Andy, I like hearing from you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you use social media to recruit volunteers? And if so, how? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, um, so absolutely. Uh, that's actually been a huge way that we've gotten volunteers over the past year. Um, so what we've done since the pandemic started for social media is particularly those like neighborhood groups that we were talking about. Um, so, you know, May Dugan's right on the border of Ohio City and Detroit Shoreway in Cleveland. So there are two different neighborhood groups. Um, what I do is I put together a Google form. It's free. It's very easy. And I just have all the different volunteerships list listed. And then we post that in those neighborhood groups. And particularly, you know, for us, we're doing drive through so everyone can see our distribution in action. So we had a lot of volunteers over the past year, see our distribution, go on social media, you know, go to our page and then sign up using that Google form link. And so that was just a quick, easy way to do that. And so I would highly recommend using social media to recruit volunteers. Okay. A question for Siri and or Andy. I often see social media fundraisers. Do you find those impactful? Um, I think in my experience so far at the food bank, they can be really great for raising awareness. Um, but I wouldn't say that that's where the large majority of our cause marketing dollars come from. Um, but we definitely encourage people to do those kinds of fundraisers. It's a really great way to have our mission and what we're doing right now break into people's independent social networks. Um, it's also a really great way for people to use our virtual food food drive tool, which is more of a crowdsourcing fundraising uh, tool. Um, but yeah, I think we do do a lot on Facebook, but I would say that the benefits are more awareness and promotion of our current programs rather than bringing in significant dollars for us. So thank you all for joining us this afternoon. Um, please reach out to any one of us individually. Our contact information has been shared. Um, we're happy to help you with any individual questions that you have or just kind of think things over with you. Um, have a wonderful afternoon and we'll see you soon. Thank you. <laughs>